So my name is Mo. Um, I'm the Global Chief Compliance Officer for Flutter Wave. Um, prior to joining Flutter Wave, I was in JP Morgan. I'm in London, uh, where I you know, had a variety of risk and compliance roles. Um, prior to joining JP Morgan, I was in Deutsche Bank. I'm doing similar things as well. Um, in Deutsche Bank, I was based in New York. Um, as Global Chief Compliance Officer for Flutter Wave, I have a responsibility for ensuring that Flutterwave meets all its regulatory obligations um, in all the markets you're operating and, and typically protect the uh, Flutterwave ecosystem. Um, as part of that, you know, I also have a responsibility for risk management within the organization, um, which is ensuring that we have the appropriate risk assessment program as well as an appropriate risk management program as well to ensure that you know, everything we do as a firm is within our risk framework and risk appetite. Um, so Flutterwave is a payment, is a payment solution company um, based out of, or well, incorporated in, in San Francisco um, with a commercial capital or an operational hub in Lagos. Um, Flutterwave's <coughs> goal is to connect the African market to the global economy and vice versa and empowering people you know, in Africa, you know, not be able to collect payments um, as well as make payments. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunities um, within the digital payment system in Africa. Um, you know, I think one, one key thing that, you know, a lot of the governments in Africa is doing is driving a cashless society. Um, I know that there's a drive here in Uganda and across East Africa and West Africa, um, so which is really good. But I think there's still a lot of um, opportunity to educate an average individual of you know the importance, the relevance of you know being able to terminate transactions digitally, um, and also there's also still a lot of work to be done from a regulatory standpoint as well to help support the growth of digital payment solutions within Africa. Um, I think I, I think I think one of the you know greatest challenges is <coughs> is is, how, is is educating you know an average person that you know digital payment is safe that digital payment you know is is the key to the future um, that digital payment could help grow your business digital business or digital payments could open you know your business your your environment to the global economy you know you can. With digital payments, you can sell to, you know, to the U.S. You can sell to customers in Europe, you know, wherever they might be. You know, so you know, one of the challenges is, is helping people to realize, you know, how much value we can add, you know, how much value you can add, how much, you know, revenue can help your business to to generate. Uh, but I think the message is resonating amongst a lot of people now, and they're beginning to understand. They're not looking at. <coughs> They're looking at the opportunities that it provides rather than the risk or issues that might be on there. Um, well, I, I think that's going to be, I mean, like, so, so, one of the, so I, I think that from a regulatory standpoint. So I know one, there are regulatory requirements around where you store data. Um, and having a reliable data center, you know, in, in, in the locality which you operate is very important. One, to meet regulatory obligations and one, you know, you, you know, from a data protection perspective, you know that your data is stored where you reside and it gives you a bit of more confidence as well um, of you know, data protection. You, 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 know, you know that your data is stored in the country you live in. You know that your data is stored and protected in your environment. It gives you a bit of more confidence on how that data is used as well. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 think it's, I think it's a great thing. I think the government needs to continue to push for that. Um, because <clears throat> you know, with, with, with a cashless society, there's there's more security, there's more accountability, there's more there's more protection of the ecosystem from a money laundering, finance, and terrorism perspective. You know, it, it creates more opportunities for people to be able to buy and sell. You know, move money around, share money, and you know, and the likes. You also, you know. Like I said, is from a government perspective, it also it helps to improve our our accountability. I mean, I think <clears throat> I think the opportunities are immense. Um, I think Africa is, is still a fertile market for growth um, in the financial services sector. Um, I think there's still a lot of room for investment within the sector. Um, there's a lot of there is, it's a fertile market to grow. 
from a from a data from a data storage perspective. Um, so FlutterWave, like I said earlier, you know we, we maintain a global standard, and we also you know watch what the regulators are saying or what the regulatory requirements are around data storage in the country we're operating, and that drives how we store data. Um, so we let regulators guide us on how they prefer us to, to store data, um, and, and that helps us to decide where we store those data. Um, for all the countries we're operating, we, you know, we abide by the data protection laws or the, the data storage regulation. Um, and you know, we, you know, we ring fence that we ensure that you know, we store data as led by the regulators. One of the ways we achieve that is ensuring that we have appropriate backups in place. You know, for all for all the data that we store and use, um, you know, and all that is done, you know, as per what the regulatory requirement is in that country, um, and we we always ensure that we use the best um, data centers in the location we're operating in, um, either it be cloud cloud based or site based or whatever. So, yeah, you know, that that's one of the ways we ensure that you know we we have a 99.9% .9 uptime which is what we currently maintain.